Hello, Ocean Chao. Welcome here. My name is Marina Yantorno. I am a research analyst at Kupinger Call Analyst, and with me is Chen Chao Wang, co-founder and director of Alto Size Cloud Solutions. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me, Marina. Well, so you know that there are many things going on related to AI, and there are some changes that we expect in the cloud solutions as well. Um, if you have to say what are the key considerations when you are designing a cloud infrastructure, but specifically for AI applications, what would you say? So what are the considerations? Yeah, we do see in our customer currently um, because everyone is trying to integrate the Gen AI application into their existing infrastructure. Uh, very few people actually bring a brand new service. So they're trying to bring this Gen AI into their existing service and kind of make efficient or make a, a little bit adjustable um, for their use. So what we're seeing in, in those um, area will be um, looking into the data pipeline will be a slightly a different data, data pipeline for Gen AI, um, a data storage um, per se, and a different set of API to make sure it integrate with current infrastructure and are also efficient enough to, to adapt with the new uh, request going through for Gen AI, for example, a chatbot or certain things like that, yeah. Well, that's, that's uh, interesting and as well, mm -hmm. I believe that in the coming years we will, we will be talking about something else that we should yeah. add and consider. <laughs> um, and now that you mentioned some example with your customers, yeah. um, can you share some example of how AI has been successfully integrated into the cloud services in your company or for your clients? Yeah, um, uh, in our company right now, we're using something called a rack and trying to retrieve um, documents out. What we find out um, in, in our daily life is everyone is loved to document, trying to document, which is a good thing. <laughs> Not everyone <laughs> documents. We always ask, oh, document what you do. So we did that. The problem is you have so many documentation everywhere and um, there's a different version of it everywhere. So what we, we build a, a, a one for ourselves to use basically a rack system to retrieve those documentation and from a vector database. So the first step doesn't involve um, a gem AI at all. So large language model. So you actually find the location of the documentation. It helped dramatically already. And then after that, you can summarize um, the, the meaning of the documentation, give, give you more kind of direct answer, uh, which is very successful in our company at the moment, yeah. Okay, okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I know that you mentioned that there are, um, well, some uh, tendencies and trends, and one that we see is that uh, the edge computing is on the rise. Yeah. Um, how do you see the relationship between the edge devices yeah. and cloud infrastructure evolving? And especially, you know, considering the deployment of, of, of AI models. Mm. Um, I think uh, when the cloud com computer comes along, um, it's very centralized and you don't want to own your uh, infrastructure. That was the idea because it's very easy for a startup to have a pay-as-you-go model to mm -hmm. go about business. And when the, when the AI comes in now, we do see, um, I, I call it like federated learning. So data is the key now. So there are applications, um, you don't want it to transfer all your data in and out from places. You're talking about another layer of security. So um, you can have a, a federated learning system. Basically, you have some data sitting in your local uh, environment, let's say a hospital, um, like in, uh, in my uh, talk yesterday we talked about. So you can have um, patients' uh, data sitting in local hospital and train, train the model there mm -hmm. and pass the model parameters to a local location and then uh, create a global kind of uh, GEM AI model. So I, I do see that kind of decentralized uh, model, which where data sits at uh, the edge location where um, the customer is. So that's where I see now. Yeah. And uh, looking towards the future as well, you know, uh, people always want to know about the trends, yeah. what will happen, what to expect. Yeah. And uh, well, AI and the generative AI models are 
creating a revolution, I would say, yeah. nowadays in, in almost all the spheres. And I believe that in cloud solutions as well, as you say, so then this is something that is impacting. Um, what are the emerging trends in AI and cloud computing that do you believe would be the most uh, relevant or impactful in the coming, let's say, two years? Mm. So when we look at the big company racing who has better Gen AI, when the model is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, I do see another trend for everyday use for people, basically small and medium company, that's our company facing uh, ideal customer is. So what we're seeing is we're seeing those small models will get more and more efficient. And um, in, in, in layman's word, uh, they got smarter for sure. And uh, you don't need a huge, large model for some something we do, like uh, we do the rag I was just mentioned. That was running a seven billion parameter model. So you can basically run um, a Mac M1 with 16 gig. So we keep it completely local in our environment. So I do see the smaller parameter model will get uh, popular um, uh, along, along the, the normal use, everyday use. Um, as well as the big, uh, the, uh, the model will get bigger and bigger as well, getting smarter. We will see some amazing things in the future. Well, I have a last question for you. Um, and you just mentioned that now you can uh, deploy models locally. Yeah. Um, do you think that people will actually stop shifting towards cloud or hybrid methods? Because I can see that in the last years, many companies just shift towards clouds. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that it will change? I was. I would think uh, that probably won't change. And um, we're talking about internal stuff. Probably you can use, um, let's say, set up a little server because customer are really concerned about their business data. That was the whole reason we're building a small rack within our company. So you don't need to take care that level of security when you transfer data or talking those data or, you, or move those data to Gem AI, come back, all that. Um, but if you're serving customer, you still you need that large scale of infrastructure to, uh, if you're e-commerce or something, you still need that large, um, yeah, large infrastructure. Uh, I don't think it can hold, <laughs> uh, it will be very expensive for the initial <laughs> investment to have that on your local a location yeah. totally and that makes yeah. sense Chen Chao, thank you so much for being here today thanks for your insight thank you. and well i'm looking forward to meeting you in the next eac yeah thank you thank you so much Bye.